everyone, welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Christine. I work at the Ada Community Library and I have a fun story time for you. We're going to start with The Mouse Who Ate Bananas by Keith Faulkner, illustrated by Rory Tiger and published by Orchard Books. And this is fun, it's a pop up book. The Mouse Who Ate Bananas. Thud! The banana landed right next to Mouse. Thanks, he called up to the monkeys. <laughs> oh, let's see if we can't see this. Mmm, delicious, said Mouse, as he threw the empty banana peel over his left shoulder. There it sits. I wonder what's gonna happen. Along the dusty path, stamped elephant. Stamp, stamp, stamp. A hu his huge foot landed right on Mouse's banana peel. What do you think's gonna happen? Uh oh, uh oh. Let's pop it open. Whoa! Cried elephant as he skidded. His feet shot up in the air and his huge bottom hit the hard ground with an enormous earth-shaking crap thud. My goodness, that's a big elephant. Time for a nice cool dip, said Rhino as he trotted down the hill to the river. Trot, trot, trot. Suddenly, his foot landed on another one of Mouse's banana peels. Oh, gosh, what's going to happen? Whoa, arg! bellowed Rhino as he careened down the hill like a runaway truck. Head first into a tree went poor Rhino. His gigantic horn speared the trunk with a grrr thunk. Boy. Through the jungle bounded lion with his big bushy mane flying in the air. Bound, bound, bound. But what do you think happened next? His paw landed on a banana peel. Right there. Uh oh. Grr! roared Lion as he cartwheeled across the jungle floor like an acrobat. He hit the ground face first on his shiny, white, white pointy teeth. With a crank! Aww, poor guy. Darn it. The giraffe threw back his head for a good gallop. Gallop, 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 but on the third gallop, yes, you're right again. His foot landed on a slippery, slimy banana peel. <gasps> What's gonna happen? <gasps> oh, ow! Oh, shouted Giraffe as his long, slender, wobbly legs tied themselves together into a knot. <gasps> he tripped and tumbled to the ground with a crunch. Darn it. What a sorry sight all the animals were. They decided it was high time to talk to Mouse. Stop leaving banana peels all around the jungle, they demanded. You should look where you're going, laughed Mouse, scampering away. Scamper, 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 scamper. But all of a sudden, what does he have right in his path? Mouse is gonna slip on the banana peel. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> awesome. And I just happen to have a Jim Gill song called Bananas. And I have Miss Mouse that would like to partake in the song as well. And she's got a friend. Okay, I'll get it started. Huh? 
Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to go forward. One minute. We're going to get started. Banana. Banana, banana, banana. Long and yellow, and I think they look pretty neat. Banana, banana. I have to say they're my favorite after school treat. Banana, banana. Bananas are my favorite food to eat. And what is Victoria? They pick them in the what jungle as far away. They bring them to the USA. They sell them in the grocery store. And I go in and buy 10 pounds or more. Bananas are my favorite food to eat. Banana, banana, banana. They're long and yellow, and I think they look pretty neat. Banana, banana, banana. I have to say they're my favorite after school treat. Banana, banana, banana. Bananas are my favorite food to eat. Banana, banana, banana. Bananas for breakfast, bananas for lunch. If my mom would let me, I'd eat the whole bunch. For dinner, that is. And then I'd quit to leave room for dessert. Three banana splits. Bananas are my favorite food to eat. Banana, banana, banana. They're long and yellow, and I think they look pretty neat. Banana, banana, banana. I have to say they're my favorite after school treat. Banana, banana, banana. Bananas are my favorite food to eat. Hey, hey, hey. I pick six and seven and eight and fun. <gasps> Come on, Tally, man, it's time to go home. Banana. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody say goodbye. Victoria, you take your banana with you. Don't leave your banana peels where our elephant can slip on them, okay? Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's do another story. This is fry bread, and this is a Native American family story, written by Kevin Noble Mallard, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. This was a Caldecott Honor book, and the publisher is Roaring Brook Press. Fry bread. I wonder if you can t imagine what that would mean. Something that you would fry in a pan and oil, maybe some dough, like cookies. Let's find out. Fry bread is food. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar. So maybe you can make fry bread either sweet or salty. It's all up to you. All mixed together in a big bowl. Look at those children, they're helping. They're bringing all the ingredients. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough. Flat like a pancake. Roll like a ball. Or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Look at that, that looks really, really fun. And messy, but messy is fun too. As long as you clean it up. <laughs> Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove, the fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet, the bubbles sizzle and pop. Cooking up that dough. <clears throat> Fry bread is color, golden brown, tan or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna or earth, light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. I wonder why fried bread would be different colors. Maybe the way that it's cooked or maybe the type of flour you use. Fried bread is flavor. See beans or soup, small tacos, cheese and vegetables, mm. delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Look at that. It's a wonderful illustration. Look at that big tower of fry bread. <laughs> nice. Fry bread is time on weekdays and holidays, 
supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. That looks delicious. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our world with unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Get there's some old family members and they're telling stories and sharing with their little ones. Storytelling is very important. Fry bread is place. Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Abajue, Onondaga, Ogosu, Narragansett, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac, and Fox, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Those are big words for the tribes. Fry bread is everything round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west, brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. I like this picture the best. It's very pretty. And I love the full moons and the stars. Fry bread is us, we are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fried bread is you. <laughs> and the little bonus in this book is Kevin's fry bread. There's a recipe there. You can check out this book and he tells you exactly what you need and how to make fry bread. I'll show you that picture. And it gives you a little bit of history and a little bit more. I encourage parents to look it up. It's pretty cool. I'm going to give you a little bit. Author's note. The story of fry bread is the story of American Indians embracing community and culture in the face of opposition. It is commonly believed that the Navajo, Dinye, were the first to make fry bread over 150 years ago. The basic ingredients may appear simple, flour, salt, water, and yeast, yet the history behind this community anchor is anything but. So anyways, I encourage you all to check out this book. Awesome. And now I have another song for us. By Dippin' in the Paint Box is the name of the title with Gail and Trisha. And it's a rhyme about five wild coyotes. Let me just switch this real quick. It's on 
track number 21. Piggy book by Mo Willems. It's called the Thank You Book. And this is um, published by Hyperion Books for Children. Thank you, Mo Willems, for letting us read your stories. I am the lucky one, Piggy says. Oh. I have a lot to be thankful. I had better get thinking. <laughs> I am going to thank everyone who is important to me. Everyone? I believe her. Everyone. No way. You will forget someone. You will forget someone important. I will thank everyone. It will be a thankorama. <laughs> wow. Off I go. Squirrels, Piggy, thank you for your great ideas. Aw, shucks. Snake! Piggy, thank you for playing ball with me. Oh, that's sweet. The pigeon! Thank you for never giving up. And I am sorry you do not get to be in our books. <laughs> that is what you think. <laughs> He's got his own book, huh? Pigeon's got its own book. Thanking is nice, but you will forget someone. What does that mean? She's whistling a little tune. Piggy's whistling a little tune or singing. I will not. <laughs> Mouse, birdies, rhino, hippos, big sister, barky dog, pelican, bear, hippo, worms. Thank you all for being great friends. Aww.
See that, Gerald? I am a thinking machine. Oh, what's she doing right there? She's doing a little cartwheel. Piggy, you have forgotten someone important. Oh, who do you think she's forgotten? Who do you think? Aww, look at that. Do not worry, Gerald. My next thanks will be a big one. Good. Oh. Thanks, Will. You are nice. So are you, says Will. <laughs> ice cream, Penguin. Thank you for your ice cream. It is what I do. Dr. Cat, Piggy, thank you for being a great doctor. You are welcome. Brian Bat, Piggy, thank you for drawing with me. That was fun. Piggy! Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Got her attention. You are forgetting someone, someone very important. It's right in her face. I think I know who she's forgetting. Really? Oh, now I know who you're talking about. Let's see. The flies! Thank you for cooking with me. Anytime, dude. They're buzzing around, answering her. <gasps> Not the flies, Piggy. I cannot think of anyone else I have forgotten to thank. Gerald. Oops, look at that. Her ears are down. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Elephant Gerald. You are the best friend a pig could ever have. Aww. That means a lot to me, Piggy. But I did not think that you forgot me. Just a matter of time. Who did I forget to thank? <laughs> Let's go bouncing. Our reader. You forgot to thank our reader. <gasps> you are right. She's blushing right here. She's embarrassed. <laughs> thank you for being our reader. We could not be us without you. You are the best. You did it. Great thinking, Piggy. Thanks to you. Yep, I am one lucky pig. There you are. So make sure and check out this book. And you can get thanked by Piggy and Elephant. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day. Keep reading.